Hey, it's me. That part of your bathroom you keep telling yourself that you're going to clean, but you never do. I know that cleaning me is not fun and can be mildly gross, but you know what could make cleaning me fun and maybe less gross? Scientists can't confirm it, but who's to say? While you're cleaning, listen to an episode of this podcast. Before I continue my first ever journey through the Harry Potter series, just a few quick announcements. First, just a general programming note about what is coming next for Potterless. After this episode with Sequoia, there will be one more episode about a very Potter senior year with Kim from Fanatical Fix. And then I have a very special episode lined up that hopefully everything will work out for. Don't want to jinx it, but I think it will be very exciting. And then after that, we will go into the next phase, which is, drum roll please, Quidditch throughout the ages. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to do the spinoff Harry Potter content and get all of the canon stuff tied up with a nice little bow. So I will be doing Quidditch throughout the ages, the book, then Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the book, and then the lovely Fantastic Beasts movies, which everybody universally loves and enjoys. Hooray! I have a bunch of fun guests lined up and I think it will be a very fun way to finish off the canon material is by just dunking on some stuff. It's been a while since we've had a good dunk in. You know, I've been mainly praising a very Potter trilogy this whole time and we need to get some spice back in the mix so i will be concluding the canon stuff with a whole lot of dunks you could call me dominique wilkins and if you don't get that reference you could call me michael jordan or lebron james and if you don't get that reference listen to horse it's a very good podcast and second, just a reminder that the Potterless merch store is thriving right now. And by thriving, I mean we have new items as well as items fully back in stock. So we have the digital bundles from a while back. We added Can't I Potter mugs recently. We restocked a whole bunch of items that were out of stock, like the shirts and the pins and the posters. And some stuff is even on sale. So if you want to get some of that sweet, sweet Potterless merch, head on over to potterlesspodcast.com slash merch today. And speaking of sweet, sweet things, we have sweet, sweet people supporting the podcast, which I think is sweet. So a shout out to Madeline Matthews, Kristen Henning, Diego Zenhauser, Helen Alexandria, Mary, Tristan Garcia, India Henriksen, Kathy Pierce, Lisa Bellamy, Juan Rodriguez, Ashley Meiser, and Gam Sausage. A name correction for Sarah Newgard, a happy birthday wish to Jen Went, shout out to Malfoy you little shit who upgraded to the producer level status as well as our new producer level patrons, Sean Allen and Jenny Browers. They joined the ranks of Vicky, Christine, Aaron, Clown, Marchismo, Samantha, Juan, Rosemary, Marie, Lisa, Romina, Audra, Eleanor, Nikita, Ali, Sarah, Rachel, Zachary, Orchid, Vivian, The Owl, Moster, Alex, John, Noel, Brandon, Claire, Rory, Veronica, Lada, Noah, Tracy, Colleen, Jennifer, Justin, Jacob, Maya, Mark, Polly, Zena, Harlan, Noelia, Nikki, Kine, Amanda, Kafir, Sarah, Marta, Maya, Flor, Siri, Georgia, Skyla, Adele, Professor, Threat, Ellie, Michael, Kelly, Carrie, Connie, Jen, Nedry, Will, Samantha, Aurora, Marcos, Marik, Ashton, Brittany, Phelan, The Meadows Family, Jenny, Heather, Brianna, Kevin, Lori, Chrissy, Jarl, Pita, Sophie, Jen, and Callahan, Leah, Melissa, Bella, Melanie, Becca, Reese, Adam, Joseph, Lily's mom, T. Run, Madison, Tonk, Sabrina, Sophia, Farzan, Melanie, Matt, Okamahime, Boney Pony, Kelsey, Rike, Taylor, Rochelle, Megan, Alicia, Riley, Laurel, Ross, Ann, Erica, Miranda, Landon, Kendra, Callista, Kendra, Natanya, Yogan, Darcy, Sandra, Craig, Andren, Steve, Lior, Julia, Demi, Michelle, Callista, Lovekesh, Jennifer, Crystal, Henrique, Jeremy, Delkis, Katrina, Jerrica, Casey, Megan, Zat, Jack, Sophia, Dan, Rochelle, Kirsty, Robin, Chick, Mermaid, Daddykins, Aaron, not my daughter, you, Biacha, Laria, Lori, Gregory, Krista, Kaka, Nina, Ribbon, Brittany, it's definitely Ludo Bagman, Ravenclaw, Gavin, Ashley, Grant, Aaliyah, Jack, Serenity, Emily, Haley, Sabrina, Steamed Nuggets and Can't I Potter? Who never get a takeout order of barbecue and only get a plastic fork and not a plastic knife, meaning that they have to eat half of a chicken by just kind of poking it and tearing away at it with their teeth like some sort of semi-sophisticated animal. If you want to be like one of these amazing patrons and get access to bonus episodes, director's commentary, my notes, exclusive merchandise, and more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Potterless. But without further ado, let's get into episode 140 of Potterless, continuing our discussion of act two of a very Potter senior year guest starring Sequoia Simone. And welcome back to another episode of Potterless, the tale of a 28-year-old man who never read the Harry Potter series as a kid. He read them as an adult, and now he's going beyond doing just reading. He's watching some stuff, too. My name is Mike Schubert. I am that grown man, and I'm here joined today by fanfic lover, co-host of Fanatical Fix and Where to Find Them, Sequoia Simone. Sequoia, how's it going? It's going very well. I'm super excited to get into this next part of a very Potter senior year with you. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting, and I am so excited that I think we should just get right into it and not waste any time here chit-chatting. We've already been talking for an hour before <laughs> doing this. There's no pretense of us just 
chumming it up like good chums. Let's talk about this play. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so continuing where we left off. So Voldemort then kind of taunts Hermione a bit and sends the monster after her, says, you better run. So Hermione starts running and writing the note saying that Voldemort is back. You got to destroy the diary, etc. And then we cut to Ron running into the hospital wing with Madame Pomfrey and Hermione is there. And I do love Ron asks, what's wrong? And Madame Pomfrey has to pause for a bit and goes, she's petrified. <laughs> Like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, you idiot. I love, okay, so as I was watching this, I was realizing how much I love these like little tiny throwaway jokes that they make. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when Ron mm -hmm. runs in and says, I got your telegram, yeah. <laughs> I lost my shit. <laughs> It's good. I mean, Hogwarts' decision to just completely not have any technology, and I know it's the whole thing of, like, technology doesn't work in the castle, which I think is just BS to not raise some questions. But, yeah, I mean, it feels like they if, – if they're not even going to use pens, <laughs> telegrams doesn't feel like something that's completely off base. Exactly, exactly. I love that they didn't go with owl and they went with telegram because it sounds fucking nuts. <laughs> so good. So Ron blames himself for putting Hermione into harm's way, and then he launches into this song, which starts very sappy, and then it gets kind of upbeat. And the song is, I'm assuming, called I'm Just a Sidekick. But I'm not going to lie. I didn't appreciate that the beginning of the song is Ron being really sad for the position Hermione's in. And then when it cuts to this upbeat part of the song, it's just Ron singing about himself. And that felt a little, I'm a man, I'm going to make this all about me-ish. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's like the point because it's Ron in this play. But regardless, it just did feel weird that his song to win over Hermione, which isn't necessarily like an overly funny song, so it doesn't feel like it's a tongue-in-cheek type of thing. Maybe I'm just missing it, but it did feel weird to me that his big ol' I'm singing a song for you, Hermione, just kidding, it's all about me. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's really true to Ron in the play, but I also think, like, aside from the situation that it is sung in, like, when you take the sort of the middle of that song, is very, like, book seven Ron, mm -hmm. where he has to sort of come to terms with the fact that he is not Harry and he's not going to do all these things, but that he is, like, still plays an important role and has to come back to the two of them to help them finish off the quest to defeat Voldemort. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that was fun. Yeah, I think this song is fun. And I even enjoy it separated from this context. I just didn't like that it's, oh, Hermione, I'm so sad. Oh, no, I'm so sad. Me, 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 me. Yeah. Like, if it was sung <laughs> in a different context, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more, especially because in the middle of the song, it gets into this no, I'm not call and response with himself mm -hmm. where it's just all of these like am i the most attractive no i'm not am i the bravest no i'm not am i the boy who lived no i'm not my favorite is he goes on a lot of these in a row and then he says am i almost done no i'm not which was very good <laughs> yeah for sure i definitely see where you're coming around that one i feel like this song felt especially in the beginning with the sincerity and a lot of the songs in this second act are so sincere mm -hmm. It is like kind of the weirdest juxtaposition from the rest of the musical. Like you just came from a space where like Gilderoy Lockhart was like, I want to shrink to the size of a mouse and become the mouse prince. And then yeah. you went into like this kind of really heartfelt ballad. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to pivot from I want to fight the frogs in the great mouse wars <laughs> and then a couple minutes later have Ron try to sentimentally say I'm not a sidekick but I love being by your side which I get is a cute all moment but that's very weird it's very it is strange <laughs> yeah it's, it, it would be like oh cool let me just have a bowl of ice cream and then eat sour cream I, like I don't understand <laughs> Yeah. Now that I've had this glass of orange juice, let me brush my teeth. I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite different. Quite is very, very much a juxtaposition. It's weird. It's not one that I hate because um, I really love the sincere songs. But yeah, it's definitely weird. It's strange for sure. So Ron then reads the note that Hermione has written and he is spooked and Malfoy comes in and he is, of course, very upset about 
what happened to Hermione and seeing her like this. I do appreciate that when Malfoy runs in, he screams Madame Pomfrey, Madame Pomfrey, but pronounces it Madame Pomfrey, Madame <laughs> Pomfrey instead. Very Draco. <laughs> Just that extra little fancy boy twist is a very nice touch. <laughs> so Malfoy then starts a let's put things aside speech saying, quote, I hate you because you have everything I want and you don't deserve any of it. And Ron waits a beat and then says, I agree, <laughs> which is fantastic. Yeah, love it. Love to see it. And then Ron continues, and I hate you because somebody told me to, which I know is somewhat of a joke, but I can also relate to it because I feel this way with Multitude. I feel this way with my other friends. I'm very much a believer in the enemy of my friend is also my enemy. Mm. Like if someone was mean to one of my friends, it's just like, I hate that person right off the bat <laughs> and I'm ride or die with my crew. Right. And there are times where I'm like, Hey, uh, this person said this, do we not like, am I, should I not like this person? I've never <laughs> consumed any of their content, but like, should I not like them because they were mean to you in this one thing? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm ready to do that. So I, I can relate <laughs> to Ron here. I also can relate. I feel like that is both big Gryffindor energy and big Slytherin energy. <laughs> Definitely. So, Ron asks what they can do about it. And Draco says, us? Not much. You and I are the two stupidest people I know. <laughs> and they decide that what they have to do is find and bring back Harry. Ron says that there's no way they're going to be able to find him. They're going to need some serious luck. And Draco reveals that he has some Felix Felicis. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. I also didn't see the next joke coming, but I loved it a whole lot is that Draco says that he got it from Slughorn before he got sacked for collecting young boys, which oh my God. I really appreciate it as a noted Slughorn hater. I think anyone that lists him as one of the two question mark good Slytherins out there is completely wrong. Slughorn is a garbage, 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 garbage person. So I do appreciate that they made a racy but still very funny Horace Slughorn joke. Yeah, that one did make me yikes a little bit in the moment. I was like, um, excuse me, collecting young boys? It is definitely a yikes joke, but at least as far as yikes jokes go, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was apt because at least it is a criticism of a character in the books and not just completely out of left field kind of thing. Yeah, there's definitely some way more questionable stuff that happens later that is like kind of in this same vein of joke. Okay, I so I, for context, I have not gotten through part four of Act Two, which is all we're discussing oh, okay. in this episode. So okay, maybe cool. stuff gets worse later on and collecting boys jokes, especially now that there have been multiple documentaries about stuff like this recently that is not great so i'll i'll be interested to see what jokes they make going forward but yeah i could see myself immediately not feeling great about it if they keep making those types of jokes right. i just appreciate a slughorn dunk because i don't <laughs> think he gets criticized enough he does and i find it very strange when people try to cite him as a good slytherin to me because he's really bad yeah he is not a great guy you're totally right <laughs> So Ron says that you've had this the whole time. Why haven't you used any of it? And Draco says, yeah, I've used it before. How do you think I got those two votes in the head boy election? <laughs> those two votes that were both Gilderoy Lockhart? <laughs> no, 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 it was Gilderoy and his twin brother, Lilderoy Gockhart. It's totally fine. They're definitely different people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two people, two people, two people. <laughs> I love that it took the luck potion to make that happen at all. <laughs> so Malfoy says that he will let Ron use it, but he wants payment. And the payment that Malfoy has decided on is that if they bring back Harry and save the world, they both get to date Hermione, which is just, oh, it's just the perfect asking for so little and something so absurd and Ron not questioning it at all. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, sure. We'll be a thruple. That's fine. I'm into it, says Ron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. We're pretty big drawn shippers over at the pod, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. You're more experienced in this than me, but I feel like a Draco anything pairing is just rough since Draco is, you know, racist. It's hard for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fanfic Draco, completely a different person. Got it. It's, Got it's it. always very, it'll be like Lauren Lopez style or it'll be just a different character. Just a totally different person. That makes sense. Which is really got great. It, got it, got it. <laughs> when Lauren Lopez and Joey Richter got engaged, I swear to you. Oh, baby. People sent us that picture like what like we got it probably 20 times in one day mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. just like drawn is real you guys drawn is canon <laughs> <laughs> 
yes, I will say that since recording the last time and recording this one that went live, there were some people who commented, I can't believe he hasn't talked about the engagement yet. It's like, I recorded the episode before it happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Lauren Lopez, who plays Draco, and Joey Richter, who plays Ron, got engaged in a very cute way. It's super adorable. And I'm very happy for them, even though I don't know them. I, I'm very happy for them. Yeah. So they take the Felix Felicis, and Draco goes to find the chamber. Ron goes to find Harry Potter. And there's a joke that they made that I didn't get at all, and I was hoping you did, is Draco, before leaving, says, I have the urge to hiss at the graffiti of a snake. Was this a reference to anything? I feel very silly, because... I it's not like the audience went nuts, but it's not like the audience went, it's not like the audience ate it up or anything, but I was, I just was, this was a big whoosh over my head. I, I don't know. Maybe he's just referring to you hiss at a like little snake thing to get into the chamber of secrets. Cause he's trying to find the chamber of secrets. Maybe the thought was that the snakes were graffitied on and it wasn't like the actual physical snakes. Like it is in the movie. Yeah. Th- it was, it felt like something like that especially the sudden urge thing because they were talking about the bathrooms and all of that. And I know you're supposed to hiss at the snake in the bathroom and then you have to mm-hmm. hiss at the door. So I'm guessing it was that, but the graffiti line, I was confused because I didn't remember snake graffiti being a thing. Yeah, it wasn't. And I was also a bit confused. So I think maybe that one just didn't land Cool, cool, cool. Well. <laughs> Not alone. <laughs> so the flying car then quote unquote appears because it is invisible. So they just have to make note of it. And Ron is about to take it but then Gilderoy is inside and hits Ron in the face with the door of the invisible flying car (laughs) and Ron goes oh great an adult maybe you can help me find Harry and Gilderoy says yeah you can find Harry Potter in bookstores this fall and then holds up the paperback copy of the first book. When the invisible car arrives on the stage the camera pans to it (laughs) which is just was a really great moment for me (laughs) they're like Yes, look, the invisible car. <laughs> the, the camera also did a great thing of not showing Gilderoy when he's there. And then the video was cut in a way where he just all of a sudden appears. And I'm sure that he <laughs> walked on stage during the actual performance of it. But at least For in the sure. video, it makes it seem like he literally apparated and <laughs> <laughs> it's rotted in the face. So it was very solid editing work. Yeah, it was very good. So after Gilderoy shows the book, Ron says, Sorcerer's Stone, don't you mean Philosopher's Stone? And the crowd erupts louder than anything. I guess the crowd was 100% British. I don't know. They were just, yes! Yeah, that was a weird one to me to get such a huge reaction from the crowd. (laughs) I know that it is silly that they had to do this, and I know that the Philosopher's Stone is actually a thing, and the Sorcerer's Stone was just something because Americans wouldn't actually read a book if it wasn't very obvious it was about wizards. I get it. But also, that person at Scholastic, I I hope got a giant fucking raise yes. because I would bet so much money that if it was called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, we wouldn't be here mm-hmm. because that is one of the smartest marketing decisions in the history of the universe. And I get that some people think it's just a silly American translation thing, but it worked. So you can't argue with the results. You can, yeah. Yeah. You literally cannot argue with the results here. Yeah. It was a weird thing for the crowd to be like so into it, but I also think at the the time there was a contingent of like Harry Potter people that were like, I'm reading the Philosopher's Stone, the the original Ugh. British text. <laughs> Look, all of those people that do that are the same people that pronounce Voldemort Voldemort, mm. which I know that it's French or whatever, so the T is silent, but look, in every single movie, they say Voldemort, and I know that in the first couple of audiobooks they don't say the T, but J.K. Rowling had the chance to tell every actor, hey guys, you're all mispronouncing the name, and she didn't. So as far as I'm concerned, the conventional way to say it is Voldemort, and if you don't pronounce the T, you are trying too hard, and I will judge you. (laughs) Uh, I've been on a couple Harry Potter podcasts where they said Voldemort, and it took every fiber of my being (laughs) not to laugh in their face and trash them for it because I'm guessing on your podcast and I'm trying to be a good guest but like if you're out here saying Voldemort like fuck you dude (laughs) who do you think you are if it's pronounced Voldemort is it also pronounced Om Riddle (laughs) yes uh, it is me Michael Schubert the host of this podcast like 
Uh, it's so, it is, th that's the one thing of, I get that you are technically correct. Yeah. But there's a difference between being correct and doing what is just socially accepted as the thing we do here. We all say Voldemort with a T because we're not trying to be pretentious. And if you leave off the T, even if you're trying to be correct, you sound pompous, and I'm going to think you're pompous. <laughs> and you definitely read the Philosopher's Stone, the British text. <laughs> <laughs> so Gilderoy says, I thought it was safer so that it was very clear that this is a book about wizards. Great joke. I appreciate this as a joke. I think the crowd's reaction is a bit ridiculous, but yeah. I do still appreciate that they made this joke because it is a very funny thing that happened, but it worked. So <laughs> for sure. All right, Pass Mike, why don't you get off your high American horse about the way you pronounce things incorrectly on purpose and then also getting upset at people getting upset about a name change of a book? Anyway, we got to take a break here for When God Him Every Dosa. Today's episode of Potterless is brought to you by Fubo TV. Let's say hypothetically that you are Vernon Dursley and you love watching TV a whole heck of a lot, but you hate spending more money than you need to. Well, what's this? Fubo TV is here to help solve all of your television related problems? That sounds perfect. Fubo is how you, Vernon Dursley, should be watching TV. You can get everything you want all in one place for less than the cost of cable. It brings you over 100 channels, cloud DVR, and no hidden fees. You can stream your shows on your TV or any other smart device. I don't really know what a cloud DVR is, but it sounds fancier than a physical DVR, and I appreciate that. Because who has space for anything? I don't. I live in a small apartment. And Fubo also has major broadcasting cable networks, so you can find all of your shows, including live sports and news. And if you're not really sure about this whole internet television, television situation, there is no risk to try it out. You can get full access to Fubo TV for seven days for free. And right now, Fubo TV is offering Potterless listeners that seven-day free trial, but also 15% off your first month if you go to FuboTV.com slash Potterless. There are no contracts, and you can cancel at any time. You love to see it. So go to FuboTV, F-U-B-O-TV.com slash Potterless for 15% off your first month plus a free trial. That's FuboTV.com slash Potterless. Get that free trial. Get 15% off your first month if you like it, and start getting all of that wonderful television straight to your private drive TV, Vernon, today. Today's episode of Potterless is brought to you by Stitch Fix. Let's say hypothetically that you are Vernon Dursley and you want to look fresh for Petunia. It's been a while since you spiced up the wardrobe, but you don't know where to go shopping for clothes and you feel uncomfortable going out into the world and trying to do so yourself. What if someone did it for you and sent the clothes directly to you? It sounds like Vernon, you need Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix is a personal styling company that brings you the world of fashion and style. Vernon, it's fantastic. It is a completely different and fun way to find clothes that you will love and that Petunia will love and that it's all about you and it's your style every single time you get a box from them. To get started, all you need to do is go to stitchfix.com slash Potterless. You set up your profile and then Stitch Fix will deliver great looks personalized just for you in your colors, your styles, and your budget. Yes, you can even say how much you want to spend on particular clothing items. It's fantastic. You pay $20 styling fee for each fix, but that's credited towards anything that you keep and you can can schedule these fixes for any time, so there's no subscription required, but you can have stuff sent regularly to you if you want, and shipping, returns, and exchanges are all easy and free. I can confirm this from experience. Kelly's had great success with Stitch Fix. I've had great success with Stitch Fix. Now that it's warmer, I've been rocking some of my Stitch Fix shorts that I love. I've talked about my red stretchy ones a lot. I've busted them out. I'm very happy about it. And Stitch Fix was great because it did all the hard work for me, and it made getting these great fashionable clothes incredibly effortless, and they can do the same for you, and they've got clothes for women, men and kids, and they're available outside of the U.S., there's so many wonderful things that they've got going on. So you can get started today at stitchfix.com slash powderless, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash powderless for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. So go to stitchfix.com slash powderless, fill out that style profile to the best of your ability, get a perfect box of clothes from Stitch Fix, and you won't want to give anything back, and then you'll get 25% off today, Vernon. Finally, today's episode of Potterless is brought to you by BetterHelp. Let's say hypothetically that you are Vernon Dursley and you have a interesting situation on your hands and that you've had to take Harry Potter under your wing and he turns out to be a wizard and then he turns out to be one that people want to kill and stuff. It's not necessarily the easiest task and you need to talk to someone about it. Who can you talk to? A licensed professional with BetterHelp. Whatever's going on in your life that is interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp can help you because they will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional 
therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online, and you can start communicating with someone in under 48 hours. BetterHelp is available worldwide, and you can log into your account at any time to send a message to your counselor. They will respond with timely and thoughtful responses, and you can schedule a weekly video session or a weekly phone session, and you'll never have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room like you have to do with traditional therapy. You can do this all from the comfort of your own home. On top of the flexibility of BetterHelp, they're also cheaper than traditional therapy, and they are committed to facilitating great matches, so changing your counselor if you need to do so is easy and free. And if you want to hear what people using BetterHelp are saying about it, you can go to betterhelp.com reviews and see how people like it. And as a Potterless listener, you can get 10% off your first month if you go to betterhelp.com slash Potterless, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Potterless, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Again, that's 10% off your first month if you go to betterhelp.com slash Potterless. So Vernon, go to betterhelp.com slash Potterless and talk to someone about your Harry Potter problem today. So Gilderoy says that he wants to sell this story to muggles. His normal MO is to do the reverse, where he just steals things. So canonically, we are living in a world where all of these young adult series that the kids love are just him stealing them from the muggle world, which is very funny. I love that that is actually the joke and not just that, you know, he wrote them in this alternate universe. It's so fun. Yeah, I was wondering where they were going with that because I was like, I mean, he's stealing Harry Potter's story, clearly. So did he just like roll up into, you know, the Capitol or District 13 and steal Katniss's story? Are all these stories real? But that's not where we went went with it, which was cool, too. I just, like, wouldn't the Muggleborns know? Look, the Muggleborns never question anything in Harry Potter. (laughs) As I've said before, no single Muggleborn's like, hey, guys, have you heard of pens? They're awesome, (laughs) and they're not technology, so they'll work. (laughs) That, I think, is one of the biggest oversights, is that Muggleborns... Since they came to the school at age 11, that's fifth grade. You've done enough where you are, you would have normal muggle experiences and you would have a favorite sports team and you would know about things outside of just Quidditch is the only sport and you would have favorite bands and music and movies and all these other things. And it's just absurd that they never at once talk about like, oh yeah, have you guys seen Toy Story? It's awesome. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny to me that, like, Hermione wouldn't, like, roll up into, like, the grocery store or whatever with her parents during the summer and be like, wait a second, Suzanne Collins? I (laughs) thought that was by Gilderoy Lockhart. (laughs) (laughs) I will say, Kelly has been rapidly reading Midnight Sun. Is that the new Edward Perspective Twilight book? She is engrossed in it, and I keep making fun of her for it, and she keeps giving me the stop making fun of me for this, I like this, leave me alone, Mm -hmm. which I think she is well within her right to do, and she should do. Mm -hmm. But she is still like recognizing how silly it is, and she has said on multiple occasions, gosh, Edward is so verbose. (laughs) I just keep seeing Twitter posts about how much, uh, how many ways Edward has imagined killing all of his classmates. Oh, is that a theme in the book? Yeah, apparently. I don't know. That's what Twitter told me. Is there a reason why there's a pomegranate on the cover? I have no clue. Okay, I've never touched anything Twilight, (laughs) and I never will. So I don't know anything. Yeah, there's some great Twilight Harry Potter crossover fanfic, let me tell you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. (laughs) So Ron is very scared at this prospect of sharing Harry's story. Ron says, quote, if you share Harry's story with the muggles, that'll be like taking our world and, and Gilderoy finishes the sentence, fucking it in the face. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) All right, Gilderoy. So Gilderoy then gets into what I think is a very fun and on-brand critique, especially to make at a LeakyCon, is that the merchandise alone is enough incentive to do this, saying that they're going to make shirts and all these other things. And then they finally end it by saying, end in time, a theme park. (laughs) Did the theme park just come out in 2012? Because the crowd also loved this line. So I think it was, it had already been open for a couple years at that point, because I remember going to it at the first convention I went to in 2010, I believe. So it'd been there for a couple of years, but it was also a, a big ordeal for everyone, you know? It was a big deal in the fandom. Yeah, I mean, it is very cool. It is very cool. But that was also before there was Diagon Alley, which is like arguably way cooler than the original Hogsmeade. So much better. <laughs> yeah, the, the original, I think if I was around when that was the only thing, I would have been disappointed because it is quite small. The mm-hmm. rides are good, but it is... 
very small. Yeah. It feels weird, especially comparing Universal to Disney, where you have MGM or whatever it's called, Disney Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom, which are giant. They are their own parks. And to call Harry Potter World a park, it's like, at least just the Hogsmeade, like, this is a segment <laughs> of Universal Studios. Like a very small part of the park. <laughs> yeah, you can't have a cul-de-sac and call it a new suburb development. Like, this is a street. <laughs> Yeah. But the, the other one is much bigger and better, and it makes more sense. For sure. Hello, everyone. It is me, Editing Mike, here to clarify the takes past Mike just had about the Harry Potter parks. I just want the record to be clear and the spice to be put in the appropriate places and not just scattered about. So when past Mike said that the newer park, the Diagon Alley one, is better than the first one, the Hogsmeade one, he meant the design of the park when you're just walking around, not necessarily the rides, but all of the ambiance and the shops and the things of that nature. That's because when they made the second one, it was a lot bigger and it felt more like the actual movie set that they used. So that's what he was referring to. When we're talking about the rides, the original Hogsmeade one is way better even before they put in the Hagrid ride, which is, I think, the best roller coaster I've ever been on. But even before that, the Forbidden Journey ride was fantastic. When they had the Dueling Dragons ride, that was very good to the now Hagrid ride, which took its place. It's very solid. Even Flight of the Hippogriff is not that bad, but the Escape from Gringo God's ride is just worse than the mummy, so it's not that fantastic. But from an ambiance, just walking around, grabbing a butterbeer, having some food at the three broomsticks, going to the shops, all of that, I would say that the Diagon Alley aspect of the park is better. And while I have you, let me just say that the best butterbeer option you can get is the hot butterbeer. They have hot butterbeer, they have frozen butterbeer, and cold butterbeer. Cold butterbeer is basically just like a cold cream soda. It's not that great. Frozen butterbeer is very good because it's like a slush. But the hot butterbeer, which they only serve in the winter months, is absolutely delicious and it is very good and it makes you feel warm inside like the way they describe butterbeer in the books. So it's just absolutely fantastic. It is not necessarily ideal in that if you're going to a theme park in Florida or California, it is probably very hot. But if it happens to be cold or you can just take it, I highly recommend ordering a hot butterbeer. Anyway, this has been Universal Theme Park Discussion Corner with me, Editing Mike. Let's get back to the podcast. But going along that line, he says, how about a real butterbeer? It's just cream soda, you fucking idiots, which <laughs> I appreciated so much on a couple of different levels. First, I love cream soda a lot. I used to drink it growing up because my grandpa was really into it. So I used to drink cream soda a bunch as a kid. We used to make root beer floats, but with cream soda instead, which is so much better than a root beer float. I will die on this hill. <laughs> and the other thing is that it's just these overpriced, like butterbeer is very good. And I'm sure if you're already writing the email about how it's not just cream soda, how they put, you know, the butterscotch, marshmallow, whatever the hell thing on top of it to make it different, you can delete your email right now. <laughs> I know that it's not just cream soda, but it's pretty much just cream soda. And it is still very good. Does it need to be $8 or whatever it is? Ooh. Probably not. But I just, uh, I think everyone in the crowd and me alongside it watching this at home, everyone just had the same relief of, okay, we can all feel good about us being kind of upset because we do all like having the butterbeer and it's fun, but we all know that we're paying $8 for a <laughs> glass of cold cream soda. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love, that's one of the things I love about the Harry Potter fandom is like, we have such a capacity to laugh at ourselves mm -hmm. in the way we're like, yeah, you know, the person who laughed, they bought that three to four times the last time they were at Harry Potter world. Oh, hundred percent is it still hilarious absolutely <laughs> yes very much so yeah it's wonderful and i appreciate this joke and i do appreciate that just as the harry potter fandom as a whole my podcast couldn't exist if people didn't like someone making fun of the series a little bit because that's pretty much all i did in the beginning eventually it got to the point where i came along and came around to the series and genuinely started enjoying it but took me a while to get there and the show was still growing even when I was just dunking on the books nonstop. So <laughs> I appreciate that about the fandom. And I think any good fandom needs to be able to laugh at themselves. And it seems like Harry Potter is one of the best at doing that and like not taking itself too seriously. And that's why things like A Very Potter Musical and our podcasts and Puffs can all exist. I mean, look at all of the fan-made stuff that has gotten really big. The ones I just mentioned... Harry Potter Puppet Pals, Wizard People, Dear Reader. Yes. These are all things that inherently poke fun at Harry Potter, but in a loving way. And if the fandom wasn't receptive to this, it would just be so different. So I, I appreciate that 
a lot of the fandom. And I also think that's, especially in what's going on now with J.K. Rowling being a terrible garbage person, I think it's really nice that because the fandom can laugh at themselves, they don't take themselves too seriously. And because they don't take themselves too seriously, it's easier for the fandom to do something like disassociate the work and all of their fond memories surrounding it from the author, which I don't think you could do if you were so uppity and protective of your franchise and anyone trying to poke fun at it. Exactly. Yeah, we've been analyzing the text critically for fucking years. We don't shy away from doing that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good. And that's what I appreciate about a lot of the creators that I have met over the course of making the show and going to conventions like you guys and Black Girls Create have been doing this for a very long time and Harry Potter and Sacred Text. It's all shows and people not afraid to criticize the book, even before it was very obvious to criticize J.K. Rowling when she's saying, you know, trans people and non-binary people don't matter. Yeah, yeah, Now it's very easy to call her out. But, like, we've all been calling her out beforehand, which I think is very good. And I I appreciate that, like, the fandom and the people making stuff in the fandom, and there's a bunch of YouTubers and other people and writers, I'm sure, a fanfic that are not afraid of doing this. And I it makes me happy to be a part of this community. Yeah, me too. But also, just a very good joke. <laughs> Butterbeer is too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so Gilderoy says he's going to ring the franchise drive every penny and then shrink himself to the size of a mouse. <laughs> Which I've heard of a few of Harry Potter type jokes beforehand. Like I had heard a little bit about the pig farts Mars type stuff. I had not heard a peep out of Mouse Prince Gilderoy. Which I don't know if it's just because the Harry Potter senior year isn't as popular. I think this is the best one. I don't know why people don't like this one the most. Maybe because it's long and Darren Chris's mic is, isn't as perfect or whatever. But I'm very happy that I did not hear any rumblings of Mouse Prince Gilderoy because Mouse Prince Gilderoy is really funny. Yeah, I think it might be one of my very favorite parts of the entire characterization and storyline of this whole thing. I had not seen this one before, even though I avidly love the first one, because it is so so long it is so incredibly long but man i think it's worth it just for this weird gilderoy lockhart randomness Let me give everybody a sweet little uh trick you can learn especially if you're i don't know making a podcast about harry potter and you have to watch very long things and you don't have the time necessarily to do so because you also have to make your harry potter podcast about the things and edit it and everything there's a great little feature on youtube called 1.25x speed and boy oh boy <laughs> Nice one. I do always slow it down when it gets to the songs so that I'm not hearing them be like, but I will say you can watch these videos on 1.25 speed and not lose anything. Nice. Good hack. I mean, I'm sure there's people out here listening to this podcast on something more than one time, which I don't understand because I talk way too fast for any human being in the world. So the fact that people are like, yeah, listen to podcasts on 1.5 is like, I can't even listen. People have hard times listening to me in real life at 1x. What are you doing? (laughs) Power to these people. I don't know how they do it. Right? Amazing. But I guess, I mean, yeah, I've been receiving criticism from my teachers and professors my whole life. Anytime I did a presentation that I talked too fast, and I guess I've finagled myself into the perfect profession, a media where people actively are trying to see how much they can speed up the thing they're listening to without (laughs) it being indecipherable. (laughs) The signs are right there. I should have known. The whole time. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Right as Gilderoy is done revealing his plan, he says he's going to have to obliviate Ron since he's revealed all of this. And then we hear an offstage, freeze, motherfucker, we're the wizard cops. And Kingsley and the two wizard cops show up. Gilderoy shrinks himself and gets away. So then Kingsley starts talking to Ron about what they're doing, what their plan is. Their plan is to evacuate the kids from Hogwarts and then destroy it. And he says that, quote, in 30 minutes, the Wizard Air Force will be here and they'll be blowing up Hogwarts. (laughs) Okay, here's my question about the Wizard Air Force. Are they on broomsticks? I would imagine they are on broomsticks and they have big cargo things on the side of the brooms Mm -hmm. that drop ammunition of sorts. Right. Okay, good. Just wondering. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they really don't like technology in the wizarding world. They really, really don't. So I feel like flying an airplane doesn't seem like something they really want to bother themselves with. No. Maybe they've got like a really 
intricate giant broom mm. that has like five, six, seven people on it and then carries the the cargo and the ammunition below. Another option, since they don't like technology, but they still want to fly, they all use Orville and whatever the other Bright's brother <laughs> name is, Wright planes. <laughs> I'm going to have to Google. Who's the, do you know the other Wright brother? No. Redenbacher, Orville and Redenbacher Wright. <laughs> Everyone from North Carolina or South everyone uh which Carolina everyone from either North or South Carolina is getting very mad at me. I'm just <laughs> I'm just destroying everyone right now. <laughs> Siri, what are the names of the two Wright brothers? Here's an answer from Wikipedia.org. The Wright brothers, Orville, the 19th of August, 1871 to the 30th of January, 1948, and Wilbur, the 16th of April. Okay, stopping there. I do like that the way this the Wright brothers Orville. <laughs> Wilbur, I'm, to good. all the to all the Wilbur Wright stands, I'm very sorry, and I'm excited for people to reply <laughs> to the episode tweet of this with a Wilbur Wright fan cam of uh, <laughs> hot a bunch of hot pictures of Wilbur Wright. <laughs> so yeah, they're there on their Wright planes, their man powered planes, and McGonagall then comes in. She makes an announcement saying that the students should prepare to leave, and Ron is very scared, but then. Hagrid comes in, he reveals himself to be the man on the inside for the wizard cops, and he goes over to Ron, but then tells Ron, I'm putting my badge on the line for this. I love <laughs> that they have a couple of the police chatter platitudes, just the the stereotypical things that policemen say to each other, because me and Johnny, mm -hmm. we will just text these to each other, just no context. <laughs> We'll just send a text message, no, no context at all, just be like, the Chiefs ride my ass. Like, <laughs> we'll just send those out of the blue to each other and then just go back and forth. So I just love these jokes. <laughs> so Hagrid tells Ron to go get Harry. Ron tries to say that Hagrid is to blame here because of his really sad pep talk made Harry leave. But Hagrid defends the pep talk by saying, this may come as a surprise to you, but I'm not a very happy person. I didn't want Harry to end up like me. Sam it's sad and it's real. As we covered in a previous episode with Eric Silver, Hagrid's a not super happy character the more you think about Hagrid. No, no. It's uh, very sad. Too real. Too real. And also, it was his pep talk's fault. I, yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. So then Hagrid, to help Ron, throws the car up into the sky to kickstart the flying car. And that is the end of this scene, and that is the end of this episode of Potterless. Whew. So, Sequoia, how do you feel about these parts of Act 2 of a very Potter senior year? I think that there was a lot of good to be had here. They poke fun at the Harry Potter universe and the way that the public has received Harry Potter in a really fun way. So, I think they did a really great job with it, you know? And, of course, I love the songs. I'm a big musical theater nerd, so any song you give me, I'm in. I'm ready. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it as well, and I'm excited to continue the discussion with your podcast co-host, Kim, yes. and round out what has been a very long coverage of a very long musical. <laughs> so, Sequoia, if people want to find you doing stuff on the internet, podcast-wise, whatever, where can they do so? My uh, Harry Potter fan fiction podcast is a fanatical Fix and where to find them. You can find us on social media at Fanatical Fix or search for us in uh, anywhere you find podcasts. You can find me on Twitter at Sasquoya or on Instagram or Facebook at Sequoia Simone. I have a new podcast coming out in October Ooh. where we'll be making um, romantic movies into horror films. Oh my God. <laughs> And I can't Please wait to have you on, on it. it. Please <laughs> let me be on it. I have so many options. The American President, what a horror film. I mean, obviously, 500 Days of Summer, but it's just 500 Days Later. <laughs> and it's just... Yes! The uh, opportunities are endless. Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Well, Sequoia, thank you for joining. Listeners, thanks for listening. And as they say in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, before they start their invisible flying cars and fly off into the sky, <gasps> a wizard on! Hey, if you want to help Potterless get better as a show and Multitude improve as a collective, I would absolutely love it and appreciate it if you could fill out the 2020 Multitude annual survey. If you go to multitude.production slash survey, you can fill it out. It's very simple questions, just asking you what you like about the shows, where you think the shows can improve, what Multitude is doing well, what Multitude can do better, and new little thing that I just learned, boop, 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 coming in from Multitude HQ. If you put in your email, it's anonymous by default, but if you put in your email, you will be put in the running to win a sticker pack. So that's 
pretty sweet. So if you're interested, head on over to multitude.productions slash survey. And thank you to everyone who's already done it. And thanks in advance to anyone who decides to do it. Powerless is created by McShubert. It is hosted by McShubert. It is edited by McShubert. It is produced by McShubert as well as Vicky Garcia, Christine, Aaron Johnson, Klaus Lopu, Marchismo, Samantha Rose, Juan Sanfeliu, Rosemary Dodge, Maria Lisa C. Keen, Romina Riff De Niro, Audra, Eleanor Curlin, Nikita Power, Ali Madsen, Sarah Nick, Rachel Guthrie, Zachary Polito, Orchid Grower, Vivian the Owl, Moster, Alex Consulver, John Cocker, Noel Basile, Brandon Pickens, Claire Spencer, Rory Collier, Veronica Bartova, Lada Bartova, Noah, Tracy Toya, Colleen, Jennifer Mark Lou, Justin Montero, Jacob Parrish, Maya Gray, Mark Body, Polly Burge, Zena Rosanowski, Harlan Haskins, Noelia, Nikki Harris, Kine, Amanda Alford, Kafir Shal TL, Sarah Shatter, Marta Morris, and Maya, Flor Sake, Siri Scaros for Georgia Davis, Skyla Lily, Edel Ryan, Professor Threat, Ellie Hoskov Chova, Michael David Yordi, Kelly Otilio, Kerry Crumpler, Connie Beankowski, Jen Went, Nedry OS, Will Huser, Samantha Lentz, Aurora Fruhoff, Marco Cepeda, Marie Rieger, Ashton Gabrielson, Brittany Gutierrez, Phelan, the Meadows Family, Ginny from the Block, Heather Langeel, Brianna Cusimano, Kevin Stewart, Lori McDonald, Chrissy Tew, Charles Fiven, Peter McGrath, Sophie Duda, Jen and Rose Dab, Callahan and Darius, Leah Reed, Melissa, Rob, Bella Barlack, Melanie Demi, Becca Spry, Reese Dignan, Adam Graham, Joseph Torp, Lily's Mom, T Run Money, Madison, Don't Call Me an Infidora, Sabrina Balsiger, Sophia Loves Pigs, Farzan Jarabat, Melanie De Grave, Matt Barger, Okamahime, Boney Pony, Kelsey Gillespie, Rike Mangor Jensen, Taylor Payne, Rachel Mobs, Megan Moon, Alicia Chapman, Riley Kidass, Laurel Happy, Ross Ann Batamana, Eric Butler, Miranda, Landon Schwausch, Kendra Hertz, Natanya Page, Yogan Shanley, Darcy Alexander Harrison, Sandra Rose, Kremick Roberts, Andren Kaufman, Steve Trelor, Leo Nachum, Julia Buzak, Demi Lynn, Michelle Spurgeon, Calista Delano, Love Keshlonger, Jennifer Terzi, and Crystal Pollard, Henrique Wolf, Jeremy Elmore, Delkis, Katrina Smith, Jerrica Law, Casey Canales, Megan Stempen, Zat, Jack Skitzes, Sophia Lyon, Dane Nemcher, Rochelle Unatmaz, Kirsty, Robin Garcia, Chick Parm, Mermaid and her Daddykins, Aaron Ugas, Not My Daughter, You Biatch, Ilaria Vicentin, Lori, Gregory Hughes, Crystal Lee, Caw Caw, Mother Feathers, Nina Jazz, like Riven Monstrosity, Brittany Harper, It's Definitely Ludo Bagman, Ashley Somers, Grant Sohn, Your Friendly Neighborhood Ravenclaw, Gavin Miller, Aliyah Elzar Shobi, Jack Parr, Serenity Allen, Emily Quinlan, Haley Hastings, Sabrina Casanova, Malfoy, You Little Shit, Sean Allen, Jenny Browers, Steamed Nuggets, and Can't I Potter? Web design by Kelly Schubert, and the music is by Bettina Campamadis. If you want to find us on social media, you can at facebook.com slash potterless, twitter.com slash potterless pod, instagram.com slash potterless podcast, and reddit.com slash r slash potterless. For any and all information about the show, you can go to potterlesspodcast.com for bonus content. You can go to patreon.com slash Potterless. And for merch, you can go to potterlesspodcast.com slash merch. If you want to tell someone about the show, whether you reach out directly, shoot somebody a message like, hey, I think you'd like this podcast, that would be great. Or you can leave a rating and review online. Both help. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, as I say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, who wizard on? <laughs> <laughs>